Hello everyone. What a blessing to come to you and share with you and extend the, the truth of our very being in God. Yeah, I'd like to talk today about empowerment because all of us have a sense that as we are empowered, as we feel the inner strength of our love and our light, as we feel love extending through us, pouring through us, as we're just floating in love, giving love away, we feel the strength, we feel the certainty, we come to the remembrance of who we are and this remembrance of love and of God is very, very empowering. And what this does is it washes away all sense of imprisonment, all sense of weakness, all sense of lack, all sense of being less than, of being unworthy. All of that is washed away as we let the love that we truly are extend in us and through us and radiate out to the world and bless everyone and everything. It's truly that simple. And so we have to step back and let go of some beliefs. You may believe that the world was here before you came. You may believe that the world already existed for billions of years. The time and space cosmos was around for billions of years before you came to it. But I can assure you that when you believed you could separate from God, when you could make a decision to be apart from the Creator, that that belief and the belief that you could come into time and space and come to Earth is just a belief to be undone. It is impossible to leave our source. It is impossible to leave love and enter a world of time and space which God did not create. It is impossible to leave eternity and to be time bound. And so as it seems there was a decision made to separate and to be something other than spirit, this belief engendered fear. And when you came to this world, so to speak, you brought the world with you. It's almost like you, you quantum uh, experience set up a world projected density, projected matter, projected solidness and spheres and planets and stars and moons, all of space and all of the intricacies of time and space. It's like a package. So think of that, you, you use the power of your mind to set up, to invent a world unlike eternity, a, a, sphere of time and space unlike everlasting love. You set up shop by believing in the ego and then you react and respond to the world as if it is outside of you and as if it's been going on for a long, long, long time. <laughs> but uh, even time is just a make-believe concept. It's just a belief as well. So, let's get practical here. Everything in spiritual awakening, everything in opening your heart up, everything in learning to love and to, to first forgive what was made to take the place of love, all that is, uh, is given in very, you might say, practical steps. And you are not hurled into reality. You are not hurled back into timelessness or eternity. You are given a series of steps of unwinding from the belief in the ego and unwinding from the belief in time and space. So it's important to 
this empowerment that I'm talking about today for you to realize that you are not a victim of the world you see, you are not at the mercy of the world you perceive, you are not under the laws of the ego which the ego made up, these fictitious laws, and though the belief in being a person, a body, a human being seems to involve all kinds of beliefs in scarcity, lack, needs, economics, exchange, reciprocity, you know, on and on and on and on. Uh, really, miracles are these beautiful expressions in mind coming from the Holy Spirit and Jesus and literally performed through you and through your mind with the willingness of your mind to change your mind about your mind, to, to see that you are an eternal being and you are not a time-space uh, person. You are not a, a, a dream figure in the dream. You are the dreamer of the dream and you can choose to change the purpose from one of scarcity, and lack, guilt, pain, shame, to one of love, light, peace, joy, uh, it's possible to change the purpose, and that is what we are about. That is the only purpose we are about, is, is replacing the, the hateful, guilt-inducing purpose that the ego uses to project a world of unreality, and then coming back to see, no, I'm not at the mercy of any of that, because God didn't create any of that, and I am as God created me. It is very humbling and extremely empowering to open up to the idea that I did not create myself. I am a creation of a loving God. I did not create myself. Every time you're concerned about pride, about self-image, about self-improvement, about changing the world, changing situations, making a better world, making a different world, all of these are reflections of the belief that you can create yourself and you have never had the power to create yourself. You are a creation of a loving God. And so all this idea of making a difference, making a better self, improving yourself, all these things are just nothing more than like a hamster running around in a hamster wheel and absolutely going nowhere. Even though they may believe they are running at full tilt, <laughs> they are actually going nowhere at all. And that's what all the self-improvement, all the attempts to even uh, spiritually manifest a different world, change the world, but the world is an unreal effect from an unreal cause. The ego projected the world, and all these images come from the ego. They can be used by the Holy Spirit to unwind the mind from the belief in the ego, but that's all they're, they're for, is that for the unwinding process, for the forgiveness process. So, you have to realize that you did not create yourself. And that could be something that you wake up with every day, because it's a position of, of humbleness that leads to empowerment in your mind. Just by waking up and say, I did not create myself, I will not attempt to improve upon the perfection that I am as God created me. I will not try to sway the circumstances of time and space uh, out of some belief that I am lacking something when I am as God created me. And I cannot suffer in any way as God created me. It's a misperception to believe in suffering. It's a misperception to believe in pain. It's a misperception to believe in mistreatment or the belief that anyone or anything can be unfairly treated. It's absolutely impossible. The, the answer, of course, to I did not create myself is I am as God created me. And that 
as a perfect, holy, innocent child of a loving, kind, everlasting God, that I cannot be different than I was created. I am spirit. I remain as spirit. Now we want to bring this down to practicality because if you live a life inspired by miracles, which is really just devoted to undoing the ego, ego belief and undoing the belief that you are something other than what God created you. When you give your mind over to miracles, there's going to be a flow of experiences that are expansive, that are very empowering and that see and show you that you are not at the mercy of anything external to your mind. You know, you're going to be shown, I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts, and that if I change my thinking, if I change my thoughts, then I, the world I perceive will, will seem to change, because the world, the perceptual world, including the body, and, and the entire perceptual world of time and space, is just a reflection of thoughts. So as these thoughts change, as I begin to think with God, with my Creator, with Spirit, in Spirit, inspired by Spirit, then I see a different world. I can either look on sin or error, or I can look on sinlessness and innocence. It's my choice. It's a choice in the mind. There really is no other meaningful choice while you believe in a split mind. Is you can't really make a meaningful choice except by forgiving and seeing that in fact, in perception, there is nothing to forgive. As I see the world in a holistic way, as I see the world in a unified awareness, as I see the world through the presence of God's love, then I see a happy dream. I see a, a a world of happy seeming synchronicities that are just flowing and gliding along and uh, you might say you're just surrendering back into that love and light that is even beyond the perceptual world, even beyond the happy dream. But you're, you're in that direction when you are not putting anything on that world, when you're not trying to read any meaning into a world of complete and utter absolute falsity. So today's lesson that I'm going to read for you from A Course in Miracles, it kind of follows on from the lesson I read last time, which was lesson 50, I am sustained by the love of God. And today I'm going to give you another practical lesson because it takes what I'm talking about and it starts to put it into very practical terms. Because you may be thinking, yeah, this all sounds good, fundamentally, and you may have a lot of buts, but this, but what about this, but what about that? And it's like this lesson, lesson 76, from the workbook of A Course in Miracles, is really addressing all the, the buts that uh, the ego will come up with to experiencing yourself as God created you. So the lesson is titled, I am under no laws but God's. And here's what Jesus has to tell us today. We have observed before how many senseless things have seemed to you to be salvation. Each has imprisoned you with laws as senseless as itself. You are not bound by them. Yet to understand that this is so, you must first realize salvation lies not there. While you would seek for it in things that have no meaning, you bind yourself to laws that make no sense. Thus do you seek to prove salvation is where it is not. Today we will be glad you cannot prove it. For if you could, you would forever seek salvation where it is not, and never find it. The idea for today tells you once again how simple is salvation. Look for it where it waits for you, and there it will be found. Look nowhere else, for it is nowhere else. 
Think of the freedom in the recognition that you are not bound by all the strange and twisted laws you have set up to save you. You really think that you would starve unless you had stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs. You really think a small round pellet or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off disease and death. You really think you are alone unless another body is with you. It is insanity that thinks these things. You call them laws and put them under different names in a long catalog of rituals that have no use and serve no purpose. You think you must obey the quote laws of medicine, of economics and of health. Protect the body and you will be saved. These are not laws but madness. The body is endangered by the mind that hurts itself. The body suffers just in order that the mind will fail to see it is the victim of itself. The body's suffering is a mask the mind holds up to hide what really suffers. It would not understand it is its own enemy, that it attacks itself and wants to die. It is from this your quote laws would save the body. It is for this you think you are a body. There are no laws except the laws of God. This needs repeating over and over until you realize it applies to everything that you have made in opposition to God's will. Your magic has no meaning. What it is meant to save does not exist. Only what it is meant to hide will save you. The laws of God can never be replaced. We will devote today to rejoicing that this is so. It is no longer a truth we would hide. We realize instead it is a truth that keeps us free forever. Magic imprisons, but the laws of God make free. The light has come because there are no laws but His. We will begin the longer practice periods today with a short review of the different kind of quote laws we have believed we must obey. These would include for example the quote laws of nutrition, of immunization, of medication and of the body's protection in innumerable ways. Think further. You believe in the quote laws of friendship, of quote good relationships and reciprocity. Perhaps you even think that there are laws which set forth what is God's and what is yours. Many quote religions have been based on this. They would not save but damn in heaven's name. Yet they are no more strange than other quote laws you hold must be obeyed to make you safe. There are no laws but God's. Dismiss all foolish magical beliefs today and hold your mind in silent readiness to hear the voice that speaks the truth to you. You will be listening to the one who says there is no loss under the laws of God. Payment is neither given nor received. Exchange cannot be made. There are no substitutes and nothing is replaced by something else. God's laws forever give and never take. Hear him who tells you this and realize how foolish are the quote laws you thought upheld the world you thought you saw. Then listen further. He will tell you more about the love your father has for you, about the endless joy he offers you, about his yearning for his holy son created as his channel for creation denied to him by his belief in hell. Let us today open God's channels to him and let his will extend through us to him. Thus is creation endlessly increased. His voice will speak of this to us as well as of the joys of heaven which his laws keep limitless forever. We will repeat today's idea until we have listened 
and understood that there are no laws but God's, then we will tell ourselves as a dedication with which we practice periods includes, I am under no laws but God's. We will repeat this dedication as often as possible today, at least four to five times an hour, as well as in response to any temptation to experience ourselves as subject to other laws throughout the day. It is our statement of freedom from all danger and all tyranny. It is our acknowledgement that God is our Father and that His Son is saved. So amen to that beautiful lesson. Lesson number 76, I am under no laws but God's. This is really calling us to live within our mind, within our heart, to live in the truth of love. And that requires an acceptance that divine providence is real, that everything about us is perfectly sustained as we go about the process of forgiving. So as we're giving our mind's dedication and our devotion over to forgiveness, then everything that we seem to need will be met by this divine love. It's part of the unwinding. God wouldn't give you a task, a, a sense of a, a mission, or a means of forgiving. Uh, he wouldn't give that to you unless it could be used and would succeed. So it's all been given and what seems to be synchronicities that meet the, the perceived needs uh, of the mind that's waking up, all of that is, is part of the plan of awakening. It's like just a little nudge from Spirit saying, yep, you're coming, you're in the tractor beam and you are in the right direction. So just keep your focus, keep your dedication, keep your devotion. In my experience in the parable of David, it's just been the doors have just opened and opened and opened. All along, day after day, year after year, and decade after decade, doors have just opened and opened and opened with a feeling that the way is clear. I give my mind to God. I give my life to God to use for God, for the whole universe. And then the way is open. Everything is given. Everything without exception is provided. And so, Every day I realize that there is nothing at random, that there are no random encounters, there are no random exchanges or uh, meetings or occurrences or situations. There are no random relationships. If I'm just working on changing my thinking, then I'm going to use every situation, every seeming situation and seeming person that I encounter to see that it's an encounter in my mind, and it's just an opportunity for giving, for sharing, for extending. What gets washed away is this desire to get something. You know, it's like, why would a holy child of God, created by God, need to get anything? Why would I have to get uh, an intellectual understanding? Why would I have to get or possess anything or any one. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely absurd when my only function is to give as God gives. To give with no strings attached, no expectations, nothing expected from anybody or anything of this world. To me, this is what it means to bask in light, to shine forth. The this, this shining light within us is not one that is lacking anything. It's simply radiating and giving and extending. It's like a, 
a wellspring of, of love and joy and happiness that just springs forth and, and does so endlessly. And that is the choice to forgive. When we release illusions, nothing binds us, nothing blocks us, nothing stands in the way of our experience of happiness. So I am so grateful, I am so grateful to be able to share this with you. I feel like the spiritual journey, so to speak, is, is exceedingly practical and that, that there's nothing missing and nothing lacking as you give yourself over to this one purpose. I like the line that Jesus shares in the Course, the peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose and my function and my life, while I abide where I am not at home. Blessings of love. Amen.